A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Relationships can be beautiful and so helpful to the soul, or they can be so bitter it becomes a constant death. Ecclesiastes 7.26 says, And I find more bitter than the death, more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands, who so pleases God shall escape her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. We find from this verse also it speaks of a foolish son, which is also a horrible thing in a man's life. It can steal the joy and life out of your soul, knowing that you generated and trained an idiot. The preacher saw foolish sons, for he had foolish brothers, and his son Rehoboam was a fool. In Proverbs 17, 21 says, He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow, and the father of a fool hath no joy. In 17.25 it says, A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. A calamity, as it's spoken of in this verse, is a very grievous affliction or adversity. It is deep distress, trouble, and misery. It is a painful disaster. It's the turning of things upside down. It's a catastrophe and tragedy that bleeds the vitality from a father's heart. This does not overstate the grief caused by a foolish son. For a son instead should be the joy of his father's heart, and where a father could be thankful and honored, he is instead bewildered and despised. The wise father will train his son while there is hope. Proverbs 22, 5 says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far him. You can argue with that all you want, but that's God's word. When he says the rod of correction shall drive it far from him, that's a promise. In chapter 19, verse 18, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Proverbs 29, 15, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Two verses later it says, Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall delight, uh, give delight unto thy soul. If you're too busy, too tired, too reserved, too slothful, too interested in other things, or use any other excuse to avoid training him, you will bear your burden. Thinking again about the wife referred to in this proverb, She's a constant nag, a persistent resistance. It's described like a very rainy day that you just can't stop. Proverbs 27, 15 says, A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious wife are alike. This is a warning to every man to marry wisely and in the will of God. As you behold her, the greatest beauty is her soul and spirit, as she radiates Christ. You want a woman that will be your crown, an order of beauty on your head, not one that is painful in your bones. Proverbs 12, 4 says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones.